Hi, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor-in-chief over at the serverside.com and I wanted to talk to you today about inversion of control and implementing a little inversion of control example using Spring in the Eclipse IDE. I've got uh, the Eclipse IDE installed here. I believe this is Oxygen and I'm just going to create a, a new Maven project that uses Spring. I'm just going to create a very simple project here and I'll just put it in the com.mcnz.ioc group and call it the RPS IOC app. I think that all looks good. I can click finish and then I end up just with a, a nice little Maven application created with really nothing in it. The thing that I want to add to it is spring support. So in order to bring that spring support in, all you have to do is add a little dependency to the palm file. That's just thrown in after the version there. And that's all I have to do to have spring support in my application. I think maybe when you look at Maven dependencies, you'll see yeah, a couple of new spring packages get thrown in there. Now, I want to demonstrate inversion of control. And the best way to start off is just by creating a couple of components that don't use inversion of control. And so I often use a, a little rock, paper, scissors example. And in that example, I usually create a score class. So I'm going to go into my Java code here, just create a, a brand new class. I'll call it com.mcnz.ioc.rps for rock, paper, scissors, and just call it the score class. And it's just a, a simple class, really not too much to the score class. It keeps track of wins, losses, and ties. Should probably put some setters and getters in there and some other methods as well, but I just want to keep this example simple for now. So let's just deal with this class here with no encapsulated properties or anything crazy like that. And then along with the score class, I usually have some sort of game service that actually plays the rock, paper, scissors game. So, you know, I have a, create a new class called the game service. You know, somewhere in this class, I'm going to end up needing an instance of the score class. And so quite often what you'll do inside of your game service, if you need a score class, you just declare it. You say score, score equals new score. Now, you know, maybe you'll initialize that in a constructor. Maybe you'll initialize that um, somewhere else. But that's the basic idea behind you know, having one class that uses another. Now give me one sec, I'm just going to change the fonts here. And there you go, with the fonts changed, everything looks a little bit more handsome. So this example doesn't use inversion of control. But let's say I did want to use inversion con of control, and I wanted the Spring container to manage that version of control. Well, what we would first do inside this code is Put a reference to that IOC container. That's a, a long piece of code here. But I'm going to say, you know, there's going to be this IOC container. We'll call it the application context. It's going to use XML in order to configure everything. And it's going to read from a file called springcontext.xml that maps names to various different classes. And this component here is going to represent the inversion of control container. It's going to provide all of the resources for us, we don't have to use this new keyword anymore. Now it looks like I've got a couple of import errors, so I will organize these imports, source, organize imports, and those errors will go away. And now, if I want an instance of the score class, I don't create it on my own, but I pull it out of this inversion of control container. So I say score score equals context dot get bean, give it a name, and say score.class. And now I'm going to be getting the instance of the score class from this IOC container. Now, of course, the next question is where does this spring.context.xml file come from? Well, that's the requisite configuration file in Spring applications. You find it under resources. I'm going to have to create that. So I'll create a, a new other, just a typical file, general file, call it springcontext.xml. 
and place it right there inside of that resources folder. So the spring context, it's got a bit of a preamble to it. So, you know, this is something you probably want to copy offline because it talks about XML namespaces and schema locations, but this is basically the heart and soul of the inversion of control container. And any bean that you want to send back to the, the calling program that, that asks for a bean is it's configured in here. Now we don't really have a lot of configuration for our score class. All we're going to say is that, you know, I've got a score class. It's an instance of com.mconz. Well, I better make sure that's the right package there. That would cause a problem. And so I've got a, a class that's an instance of the com.mconz.rps.score. The name I'm going to give it is the score. And according to the spring.context file, as you can see in the game service, if anybody says, hey, give me the score, it's this bean that's going to be returned. Now here I don't have a lot of configuration, but you can imagine maybe, maybe you're using a data source, or something like that. Those might have extra configuration that you could put in here and hide from your program. Um, but now I've got my program set up. It's now using a version of control. No longer is my program creating instances. Instead, control is delegated to the spring container where it can manage the configuration of the object. And from there, we can actually start using this bean inside the code. So maybe I've got a, a method called play the game that will take rock, paper, scissors as a string from the client. And I don't know, we could say something like, hey, if the client gesture dot equals ignore case scissors, we could say score dot wins plus plus. Um, and actually, I think that's a loss, right? Because we'll say the server always chooses rock. And that looks handsome. So we've got the score here, score dot losses plus plus. I think that works. And then we could kind of go through this whole thing. And we can say if it's paper, it's a win. If it's rock, it's a tie. And we could even add a new main method in here. Let's just make sure I've got wins, losses, and ties. So it's wins, losses, and ties. And then if I really wanted, I could create a, a main method here. And actually run the class. So I could say I've got the game service and we can play the game. in rock. Pass in paper. Pass in scissors. And who knows, maybe even pass in paper a second time so we have more wins than anything else. Probably go into this score class and maybe create a, a nice two-string method so that we can get some easy display. And then in this game service class, just say print out the score. And we have the score right there. And of course, that would be the score from the game service, gs.score, it's a property. And when I run this program, I can run it as a Java application. And as it runs, the Spring Framework is going to take care of creating that score class, pulling it out of the context, making it available throughout the game, and of course, printing out the result, score wins equals 2, losses equals 1, ties equals 1, when the game ends. And that's it. That's how you implement inversion of control using Spring.